Time, there's no a little a little tab to see where we left off so I'm gonna just continue where I assume you already read it twice too, so you just turn that person. a preacher's success depends on Krishna's grace I remember people read this one this morning I have to read the one While preaching Krishna consciousness with full vigor, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu faced many Mayavadi philosophers. Similarly, we are also facing opposing Swamis, Yogis, Impersonalists, Scientists, Philosophers, and other mental speculators. And by the grace of Lord Krishna, we successfully, we successfully defeat all of them without difficulty. You read that yesterday? No, this 
Ya, anak swasta. Oh, ya. Yeah. <coughs> you know, it's a. Uh, Sri Prabhupada said many times that this Krishna consciousness movement is meant to defeat all the Mayavadis and personalists and to uh, kill all the demons. Kill all the demons means to, you know, uh, to smash their misconception of, um, of that there is no uh, supreme being in control. You know, all the scientists, the big, big philosophers, you know, they literally have everybody in this material world under the illusion thinking that this world has just came up by chance, you know, by a big bang, you know, I mean, they have so many new theories now. But Sri Prabhupada is saying here that this, that, you know, that while preaching Krishna consciousness, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu faced many Mayavadi philosophers. And Prabhu is saying that similarly that we are also facing the same opposition that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu faced back 500 years ago. And as we see in, in the states of Kali, you know, it's just more and more um, bogus gurus, bogus swamis, uh, big time impersonalists, uh, they just keep manifesting themselves, you know, uh, just like, <clears throat> you know, how do you say, uh, you know, like these love bugs, you know, um, there's some create, uh, anyways, uh, if, uh, you guys have ever been down to Florida? There's these bugs called love bugs, and like during one season, they just start like like basically they're like born together and they die together. It's like one male, one female. They're like living like like attached with like attached to each other, and it's like you know there's just so many of them. Literally, if if like you drive your car, there's just you know. Your entire car is covered in dead love bugs. So similarly, within Kali Yuga, there's so many, uh, you know, big time Mayavadis, atheists, and person, there's bogus swamis and gurus uh, that just pop up out of nowhere, and they actually claim this. They actually claim themselves to be, you know, incarnations of God, or you know, like you know, perfect realized souls, but actually. You can see how they're just treating the public more and more. <coughs> All right, so now I'm going to start reading from Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay, please come to the text. Uh, first Canto, Chapter 3, Verse 34 Yadhyesho Parata Devi Mayaya Vaisharadhi Mati Sampana Eviti Vidur Mahim Niswe Mahiyate Yadhyesho Parata Devi Mayaya Vaisharadhi Mati Sampana Eviti Vidur Mahim Niswe Mahiyate Yadhyesho Parata Devi Maya Vaisharadhi Mati Sampana eviti vidur Mahim Niswe Mahiyate. Please repeat. Yaya Yaso Parata Devi Yadi Yaso Parata Devi Maya Vaisharadhi Mati Maya Vaisharadhi 
संपनाय विति विदुर Subsided, Navy Maya, illusory energy, Vaisharati, full of knowledge, Matihi, enlightenment, Sampana, enriched with, Eva, certainly, Iti, thus, Vidu, being cognizant of, Mahimni. In the glories of, of. Swe of the self, self. Mahiyate being, being situated in translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Danta Swami Prabhupada. If the illusory energy subsides and the living entity becomes fully enriched with knowledge by the grace of the Lord, then he becomes at once enlightened with self-realization and thus becomes situated in his own glory. Please repeat. If the illusory energy subsides and the living entity becomes fully enriched with knowledge by the grace of the Lord, then he becomes at once enlightened with self-realization and thus becomes situated in his own glory. Thus becomes situated in his own glory. Purport. Because the Lord is the absolute transcendence, all of his forms, names, pastimes, attributes, associates, and energies are identical with him. His transcendental energy acts according to his omnipotency. The same energy acts as his internal external and marginal energies and by his omnipotency he can perform anything and everything through the agency of any of the above energies he can turn the external energy into internal by his will therefore by the grace by therefore by his grace the external energy which is employed in in illusioning those living entities who want to have it subsides by the will of the Lord in the terms of repentance and penance for the conditioned soul. And the very same energy then acts to help the purified living being make progress on the path of self-realization. The example of electrical energy is very appropriate in this connection. The expert electrician can utilize the, electric, the electrical energy for both heating and cooling by adjustment only. Similarly, the external energy which now bewilders a living being into continuation of birth and death 
is turned into internal potency by the will of the Lord to lead the living being to eternal life. When a living being is thus graced by the Lord, he is placed in his proper constitutional position to enjoy eternal life. Om Magihana Timitandasyan, Gyananjala Salapiya, Chakshuru Militam Jena, Tasma Shi Guru Vedama. Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam in a Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Padam Tarati, Swapadati Kam, Pandeham Shi Guru, Shi Uta Padakamalam, Shi Guru Vaishnavam Sha, Shi Rupam Sagrachatam, Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Stam Sajivam. Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Param Sahagana Lalita Shivishakam Vitam Shya Amu Mahabranyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gaurati Shri Namah Hey Krishna, Kanuna, Sindhu, Dina, Bandhu, Jagatpate, Kopesha, Kopika, Kanta, Radha, Kanta, Namostate, Tapta, Kanchana, Gaurangi, Radhe, Vrinda, Vaneshwari, Krishna, Banu, Sute, Devi, Pranamami, Hari, Priya, Panchakar, Patri, Yuvisha, Kripa, Sindhu, Vyavisha, Patitanam, Pavane, Bhyo, Vaishnami, Bhyo, Namo, Namaham, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gararhara Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Bhukam Grosh Vyasakam Pankula Kriti Krim Yaki Pata Mahamande Shri Guru Dinatarinam Parmananda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram Translation again. If the illusory energy subsides and a living entity becomes fully enriched with knowledge by the grace of the Lord, then becomes at once enlightened with self realization and thus becomes situated in his own glory. So we actually have practical experience of this when we first started off with devotional service that. You know, the more purified we become within the process, then the more we uh, start to realize, you know, like how much uh, dirty our minds really are. Just like, you know, when we first started chanting, we start to see all these dirty th- th- things just crop up in the mind. And, you know, we start to, you know, think like, you know, I was never thinking about this stuff before when I was a comic, but actually, you know, it's, you know, because we were so covered over, we just never thought about, you know, how much filled with demonic the qualities we actually were, you know, like greed, envy, hate, <coughs> lust, and, you know, it, only by the grace of the Lord can one become enriched with knowledge. Should the Prophet saying that by the grace of the Lord, the illusory uh, energy can subside from the living entity, and then the living entity can become at once enlightened with self-realization. You know. Devi Esu Gunamai, Mama Maya Duratyaya, Mame Vaya Prabhatyante, Maya Metam Tarantite. That Krishna himself is saying that it's very, very difficult to surpass these three modes of material nature. But if one can simply surrender into me, then to cross this ocean of birth and death, to cross this ocean of uh, material nature is actually very, very easy. <clears throat> so we can see how, you know, at, you know, first we start off in devotional service and we're very, very simple hearted, you know, and therefore we take very seriously, you know, what we have heard at first and, you know, it's like we start 
to chant in, subs in such absorption. And actually, uh, this is actually, um, um, what do they call it? Nama Bas, you know, it's, it's like, uh, we're not committing offenses because we're, you know, first starting off. But naturally, as time progresses, we start to make more offenses, unfortunately, because of our, uh, of our conditioned nature. But, you know, if, if, uh, say Krishna says in that verse that if one can easily surrender to me, then we can easily overcome, um, you know, we can easily overcome this, uh, illusory energy of the Supreme Lord. And you know, at you know, first we're very simple-hearted, so therefore we take, you know, very seriously, and you know, we completely surrender ourselves, you know, and we start to, you know, uh, how do you say? We start to gradually uh, make offenses, and therefore to. Surrender will be more difficult for us. And, uh, Sri Prabhupada says in the purport, Because the Lord is the absolute transcendence, all of His forms, names, pastimes, attributes, associates, and energies are identical with Him. His transcendental energy acts according to his omnipotency. The same energy can act as an ex as as his external and in internal and marginal. And by his omnipotency, he can form anything and everything through the agency of any of these above energies. Uh, just like the Supreme Lord can, you know, eat with his eyes. He can, you know, do so many. He could perform. Any activity with any other functions of, of his other senses, you know, he could eat with his eyes, he can, you know, see with his hands, you know, angani yasa sekalendri yavriti manti pashanti panti kalayanti chiram jaganti ananda chinmaya sa ujvara vigraha We actually chant this every single day for Govindam prayers. So, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's not that Krishna has to you know, uh, be there personally present just for him to uh, accept out their own offering, you know, but actually Krishna can be, you know, all the way in his Goloka Vrindavan, you know, but at the same time by our sincere effort to make a, a humble offering to Sri Sri Govinda, by the mercy of our our Guru Prampura, then Krishna can accept that offering, although he may not be present here. Although he is present in every one of the atoms. Antantarastam Panamanu Jayantarastam that he's present within each and every one of the atoms. So we shouldn't think Therefore, that Krishna is not present before us. You know, it's just like the a cat who goes to drink milk, or or like the thief who goes to rob something. He he thinks nobody's looking. You know, he therefore thinks like no one's going to catch me. Nobody's looking at me. So I'm gonna get away with this. But actually, you know, so many entities are looking. You know the. You know the you know the sun, you know the moon, the you know the different directions, and also Krishna, who's in the heart as Paramatma, is uh, is always accompanying the living entity. So therefore, one should not think that I can commit any sinful activity I want and. Therefore, I may be able to get away with it, you know, like, I, I can sneak out the ashram one night, 
or you know to go do some illicit activity but actually we're just treating our own selves you know if we really desire to subside this uh, your energy of Krishna in my day, then we have to invoke the grace of the Lord and how to invoke the grace of the Lord is by following the order of the Lord by uh, following his uh, pure devotee of the Lord you know actually you know to surrender in this age to Krishna means to surrender to his holy name so you know therefore if we really want to overcome this uh, uh, illusory energy of the Lord to actually become in, in rich with knowledge then we have no other resort but to surrender completely on, to the will of the Lord you know we can't surrender partially conditionally or artificially you know oh let me just give myself 15% 50% you know to Krishna and to this mission you know uh, you know my paycheck maybe this much but let me just give like 10% you know, uh, to Ishkan or, you know, to the Christian consciousness movement. You know, you know, we have to actually invoke the mercy of the Lord. And by invoking the mercy of the Lord, it will be, become very easy to actually be able to see Krishna's face. Krishna Bhuli Say Jiva. No, say, say Krishna Bhuli Say Jiva Anadhya Bhari Muka Ateva Maya Tare Dheya Samsara Dhuka. That actually, you know, uh, you know, ever since, uh, actually, there is no time where we've been uh, uh, separated from the Lord. You know, it's a, uh, Mm -hmm. Let me actually read this translation. <clears throat> Simply by forgetting Krishna, the living entity has become materialistic since time immemorial. Therefore, the illusory energy of Krishna is giving him different kinds of miseries. So, it's very interesting in the purport. Prabhupada says that when a living entity forgets his constitutional position as an eternal servant of Krishna, he is immediately entrapped by the illusory external energy. And a living entity is originally part and parcel of Krishna and is therefore the superior energy of Krishna. He is endowed and with inconceivable minute energy that works inconceivably within the body. However, the living entity, forgetting his position, is situated in material energy. Uh, the living entity is called the marginal energy because by nature he is spiritual, but by forgetfulness he is situated in the material energy. So this point is given here, that the living entity is called the marginal energy because by nature he is spiritual, but by forgetfulness, he's situated in material energy. So actually, since we have our little minute independence, we can either use that to be in Maya, or we can use that to be in Krishna consciousness. So, you know, it's... It, um, also, Prabhupada says, in the purport to this verse from Bhagavatam that we're on now, <coughs> that... The same energy accesses external, internal, and marginal energies. And by his omnipotency, he can perform anything and everything through the agency of any one of the above energies. So since we're included in this marginal energy, by the grace of the Lord, we can be put back in our constitutional position in his internal energy. So it's, you know, it's, it's not that by our own will, that by our own effort and endeavor, we can actually be put 
back in, into the internal energy. You know, we may think that by my own sadhana, by my own practice in Krishna consciousness, that I can overcome Maya and you know, uh, you know, be situated within Krishna consciousness. But actually, that's refuted. Um, here, when uh, in the Chaitanya Charnatamrita Madhulila, chapter 20, verse 122, it's uh, cited, Maya Mukta Jivera Nahi Swata Krishna Gyan, Jivera Kripaya Kaile Krishna Veda Puran. When a living entity is enchanted by the external energy, he cannot revive his, his original Krishna consciousness independently. Due to such circumstances, Krishna has kali given him the Vedic literature, such as the four Vedas and 18 Pranas. So, you know, we cannot invoke or we cannot uh, try to reawaken our real consciousness, our Krishna consciousness by our own effort. But by the mercy of Guru, Sri Guru, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, by the mercy of, of uh, Guru Sadhu and Shastra, then we can actually come to understand Jiveda Surup Hoi Krishna Nitya So, Krishna has kindly given us the, the, the Vedic literatures, which are the four Vedas and 18 Puranas, especially that uh, Srila Vyasadeva has uh, compiled this amazing Srimad Bhagavatam. Not just for the benefit of of uh, devotees, but especially for the benefit of the non devotees. You know, because uh, the devotees understand the importance of this great literature. You know, this Shriman uh, Bhagavatam, Gita, Upanishad, that devotees know and they feel. Uh, very sad to see the suffering of the conditioned souls and they feel great anxiety to let um, Krishna's et eternal servants uh, submerge themselves into the material nature that they go out and they give what is, is, is said here is meant for the benefit to help revoke our Christian consciousness, which is, you know, these 18 Puranas and these, uh, you know, four Vedas, which this Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of these great literatures. So, by distributing this great knowledge for all human, for all human society, we can actually help people understand their eternal swarup, their eternal relationship with Krishna. Because only by such an opportunity to get a book can one actually come to understand who he actually is, you know, why he's suffering in this material world, going up and down, you know, up to the uh, higher planetary systems and in uh, Swarga Loka, you know, all these heavenly planets and enjoying and then coming back down and going to the hellish planets to suffer his reactions of his past misdeeds. <coughs> There's a verse like that. Yeah, you got it. That's the one, right? Where you, you, you dunk in the water and then like lift it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't find it. All right. Kabu Swarge. Kabu Swarge Utaya. Kabu Nareke Dubaya Dhangi Jane Rajayena Narite Chubai. In the material condition, the living entity is sometimes raised to higher planetary systems and in material prosperity. In the material condition, the living entity is sometimes raised to higher planetary systems and material prosperity and sometimes drowned to a hellish condition. His state is exactly like a criminal whom a king punishes by submerging him in water 
and then raising him again from the water. So actually, this is the perfect example of what real, what material enjoyment is like. <coughs> it's, it's, it's like being, your head being dunked in the, you know, you know, the toilet, you know, and, and like, you know, you're just like suffering so much, you know, you just can't even breathe and there's, you know, a stool and urine in the toilet and your head is submerged in all this nasty stuff. And, and then for one moment you get your head pulled out, you know, and just that one breath, you just say, you know, and that's what's actually driving so many people to live the way they're living in this world right now as we speak. You know, just this, this one tenth of a second, this breath that gives them some, t some hope, you know. So, so this material uh, enjoyment, this, you know, one tinge of, of uh, uh, illusory happiness gives us, uh, you know, uh, a ray of hope just so that we can uh, continue in this uh, Maya Sutra, this, uh, this material uh, path of enjoyment. Um, <clears throat> Therefore, by, the, by His grace, the external energy, which is employed in illusioning those living beings who want to have it, subsides by the will of the Lord. In terms of repentance and penance for the conditioned soul, so, so, so this point is very sweet because Prabhupada is saying that that by the grace of the external energy, Maya Devi, so those who want to have it, so those who want Maya can get Maya, and those who want Krishna can get Krishna. But getting Krishna is not so easy. So therefore, Maya. Who's, uh, who've, we have been on her lap since time immemorial, suffering the, uh, you know, birth, death, old age, and disease for so long. You know, we have been thinking that we're sitting very comfor comfortably on Maya's lap, but actually her lap is uh, adorned with thrones and spikes, and, you know, you know, you know, there's constant suffering and it's you know said that those who want to sit on Maya's lap can sit on her lap and those who want to sit on Krishna's lap can also can also have the opportunity to sit on Krishna's lap but to get up off of Maya's lap is not so easy you know as, as soon as we try to leave Maya's lap then she starts to give so many tests and so many learnments. You know, somebody may meet the devotees and uh, start chanting Hare Krishna, and you know, he, he becomes very serious to overcome Maya. You know, and you know he chants so sincerely. He's reading the you know Prabhupada's books very, you know, enthusiastically, and then Maya may send him a, you know. Uh, a very beautiful maiden, you know, and you know, he may be chanting in the temple room, so focused on the deities, and uh, he can hear, he can start hearing ankle bells, you know, and uh, you know, he can hear the sweet voice of the young lady singing Hare Krishna, you know, but this is actually. Uh, uh, external form of Krishna's energy. It's actually the um, you know, woman is Maya for man, and man is Maya for woman. And if uh, if we're not so surrendered unto Krishna's internal energy, then external energy can easily easily sweep us away. If we're not learning in the Shastra, if we're not daily reading, um, you know, these uh, amazing literatures that Prabhupada have left us, then we won't be able to discriminate what is good for our spiritual life and what is bad. 
Um, <coughs> so those who want to have Maya can have Maya. But, but, but by the will of the Lord, in terms of repentance and penance, for the condition so Maya can subside. So, this this repentance and penance. What is this penance and repentance? Are you asking? Yeah. What's the penance? Austerity is to. Kama Sinidhi Apriti Lavur Krishna. No, no, Krishna. Advendi Apriti Vajadari Bhavi Kam Krishna Apriti Vajadari Premana. That to transform lust into love, performing activities for our own pleasure is called lust in the sense of application. Performing act activities with the pleasure of Krishna is uh, actually austerity. In other words, is Nayam Deva Deha Pajani Loke Kashan Kama Revit Bujamte Tapo Divyam Putake in a Satam Shuddhi as a Satam. That you know, we perform divine austerity in an order to please the senses of Krishna. That is, uh, you know, uh, austerity. Oh, repent. There is penance, and if someone wants to answer, the penance. So, 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 austerity is the wealth of the Brahmins. So, as brahmacharis, as Vaishnavas, can really take, uh, you know, this 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 penance and austerity very seriously. But actually, this penance, as as one starts to practice gradually, this penance and austerity becomes actually it's like a hobby. You know, it, it actually becomes um, um, sweet because Krishna is all sweet. And by performing austerity for the pleasure of Krishna, then Krishna will be pleased and therefore we can actually be able to relish what is real Krishna consciousness. You know, what is the purpose of being Krishna consciousness? It's to always be absorbed in thoughts of Krishna, to always be um, absorbed in the service of Krishna. Being absorbed in Krishna consciousness means being absorbed in the service of Krishna. Because actually, you know, um, we're not so uh, so focused on associating with Krishna personally. We're, we're trying to focus on performing service to Krishna. Just like Jasoda Mai, who... She was breastfeeding Krishna personally. She was breastfeeding her own son, who was the Supreme Lord. And she had to put Krishna down. Why? Because she was doing service to Krishna by making sure that the milk didn't overboil. So one may think, okay, well, you know, I'm a, you know, uh, service to, uh, you know, why would I ever leave the association of you know, you know, you know, Christians before me? Then it's like the the whole purpose of life is fulfilled. But we can see that those devotees who are on the highest platform of devotional service, they actually even give up the association of Krishna for the service of Krishna. So, you know, by by performing activities that are pleasing to Krishna. Um, and focusing on on this is actually real austerity, because you know real austerity is to not uh, be uh, illusioned to thinking that um, okay by giving myself uh, this happiness I will experience happiness, you know by uh, experiencing you know by doing the service that I want to do for Krishna I will experience. Um, higher happiness than what my guru may order me to do, which is not very uh, seemingly to me to be something pleasing for me. But actually, the, you know, the real thing which is pleasing to Krishna is that which guru dictates, you know, that you do. You know, it, uh, you know, if we actually desire to overcome Maya, we have to surrender unto one who's uh, one who has overcome Maya. You know, one who is above the three modes of material nature, who is not illusioned by the, uh, you know, external energy of Krishna. You know, and to to be surrendered to the order of such a personality constitutes the 
the means by which we can overcome this uh, Maya Sansar, you know, this, uh, uh, this cycle of being a, a illusion by Maya, or, uh, you know, being in the consciousness of I am the enjoyer. Mm. You know, if <clears throat> and the very same energy then acts to help the purified living being makes progress on the path of self-realization. So, you know, so Maya Devi puts us into illusion and she's making sure that we, we stay in illusion. But, proper thing here, but this, this same Maya will also help us to come out of illusion. So her, her, her service, so make sure that we feel very comfortable on her lap. Her service is to make sure that we're really, really comfortable on suffering in this material world. But then again, she helps someone who is endeavoring for self-realization to, to uh, you know, attain Krishna. But at the same time, I mean, <laughs> then at the same time, she uh, tries to, um, like, she sends tests to devotees who are trying to get closer to Krishna. Because she doesn't want anybody and anybody to, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, oppose Krishna. She wants to make sure that people who are actually sincere to please Krishna can actually um, go to Krishna. So therefore, she sends many allurements and tests to the uh, to people who are trying to uh, come to Krishna consciousness. And actually, she, uh, you know, she's very expert at these tests. And <clears throat> what was the point I was going to make? That she wants to make sure that we're not coming to bother Krishna. You know, she wants to make sure that we're actually coming only for the purpose, just like Mahasa Prabhu said, only for the purpose of pleasing Krishna and not for our own personal selfish desires. Uh, there's this one time that my Guru Maharaj and his uh, disciples were on a big Ganga safari and they were going down the Ganga and they had seen this big Durga temple, this big Maya Shakti temple on, on the path of the Ganga and some devotee made a very um, <coughs> bad comment about Durga. Parvati, because you know, you, you know, he's thinking, you know, Durga, you know, he's, you know, she's been keeping me, you know, an illusion for so long. So sometimes devotees get kind of of uh, personal about this. Uh, so they, you know, it's best not to criticize the demigods, of course. But some devotees take it the extra mile and, and they criticize the devotees, uh, you know, these great personalities who are actually doing their service to Krishna. So this devotee criticized Durga on the boat, and immediately the whole boat, something happened that, that the boat just completely collapsed and that all devotees had to jump out of the boat. You know, and... Uh, my grandma was saying that this is actually an immediate reaction for trying to criticize, um, you know, a devotee of Krishna who is simply trying to do their service. So we, we shouldn't criticize the external energy of Krishna Maya or Durga just for performing the service, but we should actually pray to her to help us, uh, you know, to, to help us to overcome her her maya her uh, her that which is not you know to help us overcome this illusion thinking that I will find any happiness in this world but we should pray to her to act as Prabhupada is saying here to act as um, as a how do you say to act in such a way to help us attain self-realization, to help us attain Krishna, 
And then Prabhupada says that the example of electrical energy is very appropriate in this connection. That the expert electrician can utilize the, electri the electro electrical energy for both heating and cooling by adjustment only. Similarly, the external energy which now bewilders a living being into continuation of birth and death is turned into eternal potency by the will of the Lord to lead the living being to eternal life. When a living being is thus graced by the Lord, he is placed in his proper constitutional position to enjoy eternal spiritual life. And there's a verse that is very nicely uh, in relation to this verse. Bhayam dvitya vinivev itasyat isadapeta savipada yosmitihi tanmaya yatho bhuda abhijetam bhaktya yekam yesham guru deva tatma. That when a living entity is attracted by the material energy, you know, when it, which is separate from Krishna, he is overpowered by fear. Because he is separated from the Supreme Personality of Godhead by the material energy, his conception of life is reversed. So, because he's not um, trying to uh, face Krishna, he's facing the opposite side of Krishna, he's facing Maya, therefore his understanding of life is, is reversed also. You're probably saying. So, in other words, instead of be, being the eternal servant of Krishna, he becomes Krishna's competitor. Or Krishna's, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is called Vipada Yosmritihi. To nullify this mistake, one who has actually learned it and advanced, one who, one who actually has some intelligence, worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead as his spiritual master, worshipful deity, and source of life. He thus worships the Lord by the process of honor Lord devotional service. And then Prabhupada says in his purport, Not only is Krishna the supreme worshipful deity for all living beings, but he is also the guru or chaita guru, the super soul. He always gives a living entity good counsel. So therefore, you know, there's this uh, new... Uh, very atheistic understanding of of uh, like uh, what's that word that they use like like a uh, good instinct or like you know it, there's that feeling when you do something you, you don't feel so good about it or you feel like you should do this instead uh, they call this like uh, primitive instinct intuition intuition you know, yes, so, so you know, these uh, atheistic philosophers and scientists have come up with this understanding of intuition, that we, have, that we have an intuition and we can feel what is good, what is wrong. But actually, it's clear that the Paramatma is actually helping us to understand that this is not good and this is not, uh, and uh, that this is good and this is bad. So, so by the scripture we can understand what is good and what is bad. So, <clears throat> um, unfortunately, unfortunately, the living entity neglects the supreme person's instructions. He thus identifies with the material energy and is consequently overpowered by a kind of fear resulting from accepting himself as a material body and considering paraphernalia related to the material body to be his property. All types of fruitive results actually come from the spirit soul. But because he has forgotten his real duty, he is embarrassed by so many material consequences such as fear and attachment. The only remedy is to revert to the service of the Lord and thus be saved from material nature's unwanted harassment. There's this one nice... Uh, there's this one nice um, traditional or Rasa Bhajan uh, that goes like Paramanda uh, He Madhava Pandan Galuchi Makaranda Se Makaranda Panakari Anande Bolo Hari Hari Harinka Nama Vandavela Se Karibe Chakadola Se Chakadolanka Payare 
manamo rahu nirantare manamo nirantare rahu ha krishna boli sive se jiva jau ha krishna boli jau jiva mote udara radha dava mote udara radha dava mote udara radha dava so this bhajan <coughs> O oh, supremely blissful Madhava, is the translation. O oh, supremely blissful Madhava, nectar is coming from your lotus feet. And having drunk that nectar, blissfully sing Hari Hari. Take in the name of Hari, Bane Raft, on which Lord Jagannath will ferry you across this ocean of material existence. May my mind always remain at the lotus feet of that Lord Jagannath, who has very large round eyes. With my mind fixed there, may I call out, O oh, Krishna, and give up my life, O husband of Radharani, please deliver me. So if we actually desire to subside this illusory energy of Maya and kick Maya away, we have to fully dedicate ourselves to the mission of Lord Taitanya and you know, fully surrender ourselves to the Lord's feet of Krishna, by which he confirms that we can easily overcome this uh, lose your energy. So I'm going to end my class there. If there's any questions, comments, you know, please ask. Please uh, you were saying in your class that, you know, we must uh, you know, pray to uh, Maya to, to like not bother us or to leave us alone or like change. You know, I was wondering where you got that from because, you know, in the scriptures, the few Bhagavad Gita verses, Krishna's dedication to Maya, pray to, pray to Krishna to control. Then Maya Dakshina Prakriti, Sriyate Sashrasharam, all this is under the direction of Krishna, only by His grace can you know, will Maya stop training. Another one is Shishti Siddhi Pralai Sadhana Shakti Reka. So, like these are you know, a few, few words off the top of my head that I can quote, that I can basically support that. We should pray to Krishna to ask Him to like, leave Maya alone. And then, you know, I remember uh, like listening to a lecture of Guru Gunmaj, and like, he was talking about how, uh, like, you know, like, you know, you're going nicely in devotional life, and then, like, you know, nice Maya Devi comes, you know, nice Sari, you know, Tilak, and all, she comes with the garland. And, like, you know, you look at Krishna, you look at Maya, you look at Krishna, you look at Maya, you look at Krishna, you look at Maya, and she said, she's got to run, you know, she's not even looking, he says, get out, Maya, get out, get out, Maya, and like, you know, like, he says it like that, you know, you know so. You know, so th this is this is what like I don't mean listening to this lecture with you in pitch me. So I was just wondering where you got this from, and if you could back your statement. Yeah. Um, Scripture. I don't ever. I, I had thought I read this somewhere. So, but you could give I mean, uh, scriptural evidence for that statement. Yeah. But for sure, there's a, a lot more uh, evidences in Prabhupada's books and in, in, in the bhajans of the, the previous acharyas that say that actually we have nothing to do with uh, we have nothing to do with the demigods. Uh, just, just like Narutta Das Thakur's first bhajan is Shri uh, Prema. She. She bak she prema ch prema bhakti chandrika in the last verse of that first bhajan it, it says that actually we have that uh, what's the actual translation the way he says it is very you know uh, let's listen listen to your brothers you know not, you know we don't we don't want to worship anyone but we just want to worship Krishna we only want to worship I want you to name something demigod simply worship Krishna not on that track we speak the truth so yeah we said and pray to the demigods. So, but then again, like I, I was trying to make the point that we should disrespect them. We should okay. give them our respect, but yeah, we shouldn't worship them. You know, honestly, I mean, um, we we should only have our, you know, full attention on you know the lotus feet, of, the lotus feet of Krishna, and expect Krishna to be our only sustainer, maintainer. You know, and our, our ultimate protector. So, yeah, it's it's not at all necessary to pray to the demigods for protection or for maintenance or anything. Because, 
you know, that the Rishon of Bhagavad Gita that actually Krishna is providing all these things to the demigods. So it's a prayer to the source and not to the Okay. Uh, uh, else? Maybe. Uh, just a kid who had a question, which, which is part of it was already answered with the <coughs> with the, the discussion that just happened. But uh, another part of it, he's asking, he's saying, "How did Krishna prove it was a it was something?" And it is a must class. I think it's good class. Good class. I thank you for your class. On Maya Devi, how would you explain our acharyas criticizing Maya Devi when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself called Maya as a witch, Bhakti Thakur also calling her a bad names, Prabhupada saying that we are fighting a war against the witch Maya, etc., even though she is rendering service to Krishna by enticing the world into entities? So we should respect and pay her. Should, so, should we respect and, and play with her, considering her as a devotee or consider her our enemy? Give her a full blown fight on hearing by hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna as our only weapon against her. Considering how our acharyas and Mahaprabhu have been criticizing Maya, it doesn't seem like a problem criticizing her and considering her our enemy to stop us from going to Krishna. Well, Sri Prabhupada says in his purport that <coughs> inner energy can also help us to make progress and to perfect the living entity on the path of self realization. So, the Charyas may criticize Maya Devi, but you know, if we're on that same platform where um, you know that we can also criticize Maya Devi, then that depends on the individual. But as far as this uh, purport says, that you know, uh, we shouldn't um, you know disrespect her. But then again, she is our enemy because she is putting us into illusion. So, you know, uh, to, you know, blasphemy, you know, to call Maya Devi bad names, um, I don't recommend that. And it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's very much get that one instance what happened. So I mean, y in, yeah. I mean, like it's like it depends how personal you actually take it. You know, it's. It, I mean, if you know, uh, one can be, you know, when the charyas are playing around, but you know, un understanding that actually, you know, we ultimately give all respect to the demigods, and you know, you know, like we don't criticize them. Like this, so you know if uh, you have to add anything to that. So, um, point you're making. So yeah, you know, of course we must look at Maya Devi as as we must respect her, of course, but we must always know for certain we must be scared like anything of Maya, you know. Uh, some someone a few times you know, devotees ask you like Maharaj, you know, Maharaj, you know, how have you been sannyasi, you know, all the all your life, you know, how have you been doing what you've done well, like so many other sannyasis fell down. He said, I'm scared of Maya. So you must be very scared of Maya. You must be very scared of the illusory energy. You might like, you know, and like you should not take it to the next other extreme that like that I've heard like you would say Maya's a Maya's, you know, this and like you know, we should not obviously not do that. But yeah, we must, uh, you know, be fully afraid of Maya and, you know, run away from Maya and just simply take shelter of Krishna. Having faith that Krishna will protect, you know, because there's no point, because with this misunderstanding, a lot more uh, nonsense can come into a movement. For example, once you're distributing books, there was Saraswati Puja, and we should have one eye but around Jackson Heights, so we thought, okay, let's go into this... Uh, Bogus Zuga temple or whatever, you know, some temple was there, like, you know, they nothing, no padati, nothing um, bona fide, just, you know, having their own concoction and worshipping Durga. 
So we went there, you know, we tried to shooting books and there, lo, lo and behold, we ran into like a Iskand, initiated disciple of a very famous guru in our movement. You know, and we asked her, what are you doing here? You know, she said, oh, Prabhu, it wasn't Panchami, you know, she's also a demigod, you know, we worship her like this, and, you know, we do this, that, and the other thing, and Prabhuji, don't mind, you can eat whatever they cook, they don't keep onion and garlic, <laughs> you know. So like this misunderstanding can take us a, fa- a long way off the real course. You know, so for us, you know, we must repeat the word of the Asher. If they say Maya is a witch, we say Maya is a witch. And like, you know, we've heard our gurus say it. We've heard, you know, one of our disciples of our gurus say it. We've heard our own, like, you know, equals say it. And like, we just repeat the words of the Acharya. You know, you know, Bhakti you know, Taku is saying, you know, you're sleeping on the lap of the witch called Maya. I'm not going to say you're not sleeping on the lap of the witch called Maya. I'm also going to say you're sleeping on the lap of the witch called Maya. So we must. We must repeat the words of the Acharya, it's just the way they repeat it. This whole, we're not on the same platform, unless I, until I see the truth, I can't, I can't speak about the truth. That's actually, this t- leads to this, this mentality of becoming Bhajananandi and just like, when I get purified, then I can go preach. No, as you preach, you get, you get, you get purified. I was just reading the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, if I had my king, I could pull it up. It's simply by repeating the words of the Acharyas. Actually, do you, do you have your, uh, uh, do you have, do you subscribe to uh, Bhakti Goswami e- Maharaj's email? Yeah. So, we, let me read out that quote. Here. Here. Take a seat over here. I'm sure they can hear me. Give me their phone. Yeah. So, here you go. Uh, you can it here. One should submissively receive the transcendental messages from spiritually advanced sources and chant the very same messages for one's own benefit as well as the benefit of one's audience. This is from Adi Lila chapter 2 verse number 117. So if you simply repeat the word of the Acharya, Acharya say Maya is a witch, we say Maya is a witch. You know, we are not like, you know, this, oh, you know, oh, you know, yes. This, no, this, this is what they say, that's what we say. So yeah, Prabhupada say we declare war on Maya, we are declaring war on Maya. Sure, Prabhupada didn't say this that, and the other thing, they didn't dis- disrespect Maya Devi. There, there are instances where in India, sure, Prabhupada, when he first took his disciples to Vrindavan and to Delhi, and there was like, they, they went into a demigod temple. Sure, Prabhupada told his disciples to do exactly as I'm doing. And the way he offered obeisances was different than the, the way we offer obeisances to the deities of Krishna. You know? So, like, we must always look at that. And another scriptural quote. And from the Bhagavatam is Mumukshu Guru Rupa Hitva Buddha Patinata Narayana Kalashanta Bhajantyana Suiva. The you know, although the Vaishnavas are non envious and they like you know they they really really like have good heart, they simply worship the all blissful forms of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Lord Vishnu and they do not worship the other ghastly forms of the demigods. You know, so yes we can show respect but you know to a certain certain extent. Another point of view we can see is with Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampadas and the Madhva Sampadaya, yes, they also have deities like you know Surya Ganesh and they have Durga and I'm missing out one demigod that they you know respect. But they always like you know keep Vishnu on the higher platform. So yeah, you know, we can like you know respect him, but like the way our Acharya start is like you just go head on and be vanquish any like any sort of sentimental this that and the other thing. If you want to worship Maya, Shishti Siti Pala Sadhana Shakti Reka, Shaya Vesha Bhuna and Vibhat Turga, Ichana Rupama Vyashita Teshta Tesha, Govinda Mahapurusha Shanta Maham Bajami. You know, Maya Devi is the shadow of Krishna. And because she's the shadow of Krishna, we worship Krishna. Because according to Krishna's Icha, according to Krishna's desire, she transforms into the Yoga Maya and she gives the the, the, the the devotees the opportunity to perform devotional service. So solely our aim is solely and wholly simply worship of Krishna. Tasma Dikina Manasa, Bhagavan Sadatan Padi Shotavyam Kitabya Shadhya Pujesh Chindityada. That we must with single pointed attention constantly hear about and chant the glories of Krishna. I'm sorry if I that was wrong there. I want to clarify that. Any other questions, comments? Actually, I have the offering just went up, so I'm saying you can continue. Okay. So you're making that, uh, you're quoting that verse from uh, Chaitanya Shatamrita. The Ma- I forget the bang Bangla Maya. It's in the Madhuri chapter 25, right? So Vyasadeva wrote these 
Ah, yeah. yeah. So in, in it's really interesting. It's in that purport yeah, or the purport yeah. right after that. Shri Prabhupada is speaking about how Krishna comes in three forms. You know, um, Krishna comes in three forms. Krishna comes as a spiritual master. Krishna comes as a Vedic literature, and then finally Krishna himself comes. You know, so just thinking it's so it's so it's so uh, sweet to Shri Prabhupada. Not sweet. I mean, so compassionate to Shri Prabhupada. You know, to like write his books, appear himself, you know, as a, as a, well, you know, Jagat Guru, Shiksha Guru, and also give us, you know, Radha Govinda, you know, Radha Shamsundar, you know, and like all these other deities to worship. You know, I was, I was, I was hoping if he, like, he could share like a realization to something on that point, you know, like, you know, he gave us the Vedic literature, Prabhupada came to give us the Vedic literature, he gave us, you know, Acharyas, he gave us, you know, Krishna and everything. I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more on that subject. Yeah, that is one verse. Jaya samoho hito jiva atmana trigunatmakam paro pi manute nartam tarkritam chabhi paldiyade. That due to this external energy, the living entity, although transcendental to the three modes of material nature, thinks of himself as a material product and thus undergoes the reactions of material miseries. So, you know, we can all have this this uh, very um, vivid uh, realization that you know, before coming to Christian consciousness, we we're all experiencing the you know uh, uh, the hard kicks of Maya. You know, prior to coming to Christian consciousness, I, I was working <coughs> at a. a Selling real estate, selling timeshare, and you know it was so difficult to sell. I mean, timeshare was for me it was like something really difficult to sell, and it's like you know just like I mean, like, there's just so many things going on in my life already that were stressful, and you know I was you know in complete anxiety, but to stay in this job which was basically sit down and you take like a, a tour or two a day and you get paid like $120 to just to sit down and you know basically you do it nothing you know this the stress is always there that if you don't sell you you're fired mm -hmm. and prior to having the opportunity to be on the sales floor you have to go through like a whole month intense training course so it's like prior to actually getting a job, you gotta go through so much anxiety and memorize a whole entire script, just like a movie, like literally, like you know, like a hour long of just speaking something you you just have to learn, like like every like verbatim, word oh by word. God. So it's constant anxiety to learn this by the time span just to get the job. So finally, I got this job, and I mean anxiety because you know it's difficult to sell a freaking timeshare, and I was just like really an anxiety but there was this one you know like you know head poncho of you know selling i mean he was like Achari. you know he was like the 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 acharya of selling timeshare powered by mine and you know actually he was empowered by uh you know christian to sell because yeah he was a devotee of krishna whoa oh. and, and he was the first person who actually gave me uh bhagavad gita as it is and, and this person, I mean, I, at, at first when I seen him, I mean, like, he used to walk with like, you know, like, you were so enthusiastic and like, everybody he spoke to, he always spoke about Krishna openly in the, in the job. Like, everybody knew him to be a, a, a Krishna Bhakta. You know, he would go to work, Tilak, I mean, like, everything like this, and, and, and like a nice, uh, silks, uh, like a nice silk chatter from India and he, he just looked far out all the time and man when he spoke he spoke with such conviction so he, he like gave me this Bhagavad Gita he's like bro you know take this book you know you know read this book you know and uh, you know as soon as I started reading the Bhagavad Gita there is actually days I remember where I would go home and just sit down on my desk and just open the Bhagavad Gita. And, you know, I, I was like, at the point of like the third, the 13th chapter, w w where it speaks about the three modes of material nature. And I remember I used to read about, you know, how 
how you know Maya has put us into illusion. You know, since I'm immemorial, you know, and how you know to actually um, overcome Maya, we have to surrender to Krishna. You know, and you know, I remember very vividly that you know tears would flow down my eyes, and like I, I just felt like this is like, you know, you know, this is the answer to all my anxieties and you know my you know miseries of life. You know, and his verse reflects that perfectly. Jaya samoho hito jiva atmana trigunatmakam parobi manute nartam takritam javipadhyate. That to, due to this external energy, the living entity, although transcendental to the three modes of material nature, thinks himself as a material product. So, you, you, know, you, know, you know, the jiva is thinking himself to be the doer. That if I get this job, I will overcome the you know, anxiety of you know, wealth. Or you know, by uh, having this uh, you know this nice car, I'll you know become free from the misery of you know not worrying about going to you know this place or, or to my job. So it's, it's like you know so many um, uh, different things were leading up to this point, and you know as soon as I was reading this, you know. Uh, to the Bhagavad Gita, that always, literally, every purport would just, you know, focus on surrender to Krishna, give up, you know, Maya, you know, <laughs> you know, and you know, it, 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 you know, just touched me. And then after that, I had went to the temple for the first time during a big festival, and you know, I got to see the beautiful form of. Uh, Radha Shama Sundar for the first time, and it was like ever since then, you know, you know, we danced like anything, and you know, it all started by the book, you know. So, you know, these books are meant to bring people to the lotus feet of Krishna, and you know, Sri Prabhupada said, "What is the use of your three-minute preaching if this person doesn't take a book?" We may preach, we may preach so much, but if this person uh, doesn't take a book with them, then whatever we said may stay for them for, you know, probably like five minutes after or something. You know, but if we really want to benefit somebody, we give them Prabhupada's books. So thereby they can have this, you know, great literature that they can actually read on a daily basis and actually get the realization because just like this devotee was preaching to me like anything you know but like the way he said was sound like very nice but then the next moment I was back you know doing my nonsense you know but because he gave me the Bhagavad Gita I was constantly reading and purifying my consciousness by reading this uh, Gita so yeah if um, anybody else wants to share any realizations uh, is uh Xavier says, Hare Krishna Prabhus, is, is it wrong to respect Maya as a great opponent in battle? Similar to Arjuna fighting his relatives and teacher, Arjuna must fight through the attachments and illusion and do as Krishna instructs. Only then does he have the strength to fight and take his true position. So the question is, if we should uh, respect Maya as a great opponent in battle. What if, uh, you know, if if one is at war with, uh, you know, the opponent, then, you know, just like the famous saying, go and show no mercy. You know, we shouldn't, um, you know, uh, hold back one uh, one inch, you know. Uh, we should always be um, in attack and defense mode. We shouldn't feel like, <clears throat> oh well, you know, she's a great devotee, so therefore, uh, uh, you know, I won't have to uh, always be in defense mode. You know, we should always uh, feel our, ourselves. You know, I actually, so Papa used to say that. You know, you know, 
the reason with you uh, uh, Westerners is that you guys are not afraid of Maya. Not enough so not afraid enough of Maya so therefore if we really want to uh, attempt to overcome Maya Devi and, and this big illusion that we're always in we, we must always be absorbed in Krishna which is which is not Maya you know uh, wherever there is uh, wherever there is uh, darkness uh, there is nescience and uh, and whatever there is Krishna there is light so if we think that okay well let me uh, you know uh, you know my day was a great devotee you know uh, you know I don't have to be you know I don't have to chant my 16 rounds so seriously this day you know or I don't have to read you know the book so attentively so if we let any room in for Maya she can easily take advantage because she's always uh, because her job is to keep us on her lap you know her job is to keep us in illusion so therefore we should not give her any room any uh, you know uh, any space to wither in and therefore cut cause disturbance. Sri Prabhupada said that spiritual life is like a razor's edge. That one moment in attention, immediately bloodshed. So if, you know, at any moment, if we're inattentive um, and not, you know, showing any, uh, you know, uh, fear of Maya, if, you know, if, you know, at, if for one moment we think that, you know, uh, Maya isn't so bad, you know. It's like, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, then she can easily cut havoc and actually ruin our spiritual lives. So, therefore, it's always recommended that we should constantly be absorbed within Christian consciousness. That's. Uh, I just wanted to. So, Xavier's question, you know, is asking if like we have to, you know. Respect Maya as you know as a, as a great opponent and all that, you know. But the, we need to understand the only way we can overcome Maya is through by the mercy of Hari, you know, by the mercy of Krishna. And Krishna's most merciful incarnation, Hari Nama. So, you know, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says in uh, you know, he sings in Gurudev, Sakala Samane Kurite Shakati Deho Nata Jata Jata Tavedo Gayo Hari Nama Sukhe Aparadha that when we look at everyone, you know, like with, with respect, and we look at them equally, then we can chant the whole names with Krishna without, without offense. So, like, you know, to answer this question, you know, that if we respect, you know, Maya, yes, you know, she's there, okay, and we respect her, and, like, you know, we discriminate, you know, what's reality, what's illusion, and we just by respecting her and by doing our bhajan, then, like, you know, we'll be saved by Krishna. Yes. Yeah, so, 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 practical advice is that. You know, you know, what's it mean to overcome Maya, and what's it mean to surrender to Krishna? You know, he's a very general term is used a lot, but actual surrender to Krishna means to uh, always perform service to Krishna by chanting Krishna. You know, Maya metam tarantite that by you know Devi Asugunami that it's very easy to overcome. That it's very difficult to overcome these three modes of material nature. So, but if one surrenders to me, Krishna is saying it's very easy. So, to surrender to Krishna means to surrender to the holy name. We should always be absorbed in chanting the holy name. And, you know, it's chanting the holy name and also chanting Krishna's glories. You know, preaching is also chanting. So, if, you know, you know if actually we're preaching to the living entities, if we're trying to give them the holy name as well, you know, uh, you know, if, if uh, we're trying to distribute these books, we will actually get a more deeper taste for the holy name. So, in this way, it'll be very easy to overcome Maya. Okay? Jai, Prabhu. Rantara, Shumad Bhagavatam, Ki. Jai.